Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to get PostFix up and running on Proxmox so that we'll be able to receive email notifications from our Proxmox server when tasks like backup have been completed. PostFix comes pre-installed with Proxmox, so we're just going to have to do some configuration to get it up and running. So now let's head over to our Proxmox web interface to start looking at the steps that are going to be required for getting PostFix configured to work with our Gmail account so we can start receiving emails from an external email address that give us notifications about what our Proxmox server is doing. As I said before, PostFix is already installed on Proxmox, so we're just going to need to enter the configuration files for PostFix. Here we have a freshly installed version of Proxmox just for these configuration steps. So the first thing we're going to need to do to start configuring Proxmox to use PostFix with our Gmail account is to actually enter the command line. That's right, we're not going to be able to do this all inside of the web interface. We're going to have to use CLI to configure these configuration files for this process. So we'll start out by selecting our server. In our case, ours is PVE and we have no other servers inside of our data center. Then we're gonna select shell and we're gonna get a window that looks like so. Now here we can start entering our commands to start interacting with PostFix and get it set up to interact with our Gmail account. The first thing we're going to need to do is open a configuration file for PostFix and we're gonna use Nano to do so. So the configuration file is shown here at etc postfix main.cf. Let's go ahead and press enter and this will give us configuration file. Now, some of the configuration file is provided for us already, and we're just gonna have to tweak a few things. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and start looking at what we're gonna add and what we're gonna tweak. We're gonna leave my networks alone as this is localhost and Proxmox can interact on localhost. Our relay host, let's go ahead and comment out. Then let's go ahead and go below this compatibility uh, underscore level two, and we're going to add some lines here. So the first one we're going to be adding is a relay host, and the relay host is going to be smtp.google.com, and that's going to be on port 587. That's going to allow us to communicate with the gmail.com server. Then we're going to set up other configurations for that Gmail server to use TLS to require authentication. And then we're going to set a mapped password file, which we'll make here in a minute. And then we configure it not to be anonymous and where our SSL certificate is going to be, as well as the fact that we're going to be using IPv4, as that is what my network is configured to use today. And most of you here in America will also be using IPv4. The last line we have is we're telling it that we're going to use all interfaces here on the Proxmox server to listen to. So with that, we can press Control X, Y and enter to save this file. And we can go on to creating our secrets file that is going to store our email address, our password to our email address, as well as any other information that's required. So to create that file, we're going to use nano here. We're going to create that again at etc postfix, but this time we're going to call the file sasl underscore pass wd. Pressing enter, you can see this is a new file. And we're going to start this file out with the stmp.gmail.com inside of brackets, just like we had configured for our relay host. And we're also going to give it our port number. Now we're going to press space 
and we need to give it the email that we're going to use. I've set up an email address specially for this video and other Proxmox or VE videos that I want to do that require email addresses. So let's go ahead and bring that email address in here. Now that we've brought that email address in, we need to add a colon to denominate where our password is going to begin and we need to get our password. To go ahead and get our password, we're going to want to go over to the Gmail account. I've pre-logged into my Gmail account here and you can see it signed up and you can see that we've freshly activated two-step verification. Now, I, it's my understanding that you have to have two-step verification, but you can have any form of two-step verification that Gmail offers. With two-step verification set up, we're going to go ahead and head over to myaccount.google.com slash app passwords, and that's passwords, it's plural, and you're gonna get this page. What this page is going to do is it's going to allow us to set up our app password. This is a somewhat less secure authentication technique for any application that uses two-step verification. Now, like I said before, Postfix is going to require you to use this app passwords feature in order to authenticate with my configuration files. So you will have to have two-step verification turned on so that you can use this app passwords feature. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to enter our app name, we'll call ours Proxmox, and we'll hit create. Once we hit create, Proxmox, once we hit create, Gmail or Google is going to give us our app password. Right here is the app password that I'll be using for this account. And yes, I did blur it out on you. Let's go ahead and copy it, and we can go ahead and head back to our Proxmox web interface. Now that we've created this app password, I'll show you what to do with it. So here back at Proxmox and back at our command, let's go ahead and paste that password in right after that colon. So let's go ahead and save this file by pressing Control X, Y, and Enter we can continue on with our steps. The continuation of our steps is going to be to hash this file and then secure it using chown and, and passing it to the root ownership and chmod in order to create who can access this file. So the first command is going to be postmap and it's going to then be followed by the path of the configuration file. It's my understanding that this command is the command that's issued to hash the file. Then we're going to change the ownership of the file to root ownership. And followed by then, we're going to set our access control with chmod 600. And again, the path to the file. So now this should be all configured. We're ready to restart Postfix and see if everything works. We're going to use system CTL restart Postfix in order to do so. Let's go ahead and press enter. And when we return back to the command line, Postfix should have been rebooted. The next command we're going to issue is a test command to make sure everything's up and running. So we're going to do echo and we're going to then give something in quotes for a test. We're going to call it test email body, a pipe delimiter, mail dash lowercase s, test email for our title. And then we need to give it our email address. Now this email address is going to be the same one that we provided during the configuration of Postfix. For me, 
but it could be any email address that you wish to send this email to. So you could send this actually to a different email address that's your private email address on, say, your phone, so that you always get your notifications from your Proxmox server if something's going on all you're on the road. After all, that's the reason for passing this to an outside mail server is so that you can get your notifications no matter what, not just on your local network. So let's go ahead and enter that email address here and press enter. Now we got some warning messages and I'm not too sure if they've affected us or not, but if everything went right, we should have gotten an email on our Gmail account. And I didn't receive an email on our Gmail account, but upon examining these error messages, it looks like we have an instance of our interfaces being incorrectly configured. So let's head back to our postfix configuration file and comment out a line and see if that solves our problem. So I just simply press the up arrow until I got to our nano for our postfix configuration file and I'm going to press enter. And I believe because we are using localhost, our interfaces all command line isn't needed here. So let's go ahead, add a hashtag, or a pound symbol and comment out that line. Let's then press Control X, Y, Enter, and reboot Postfix. With Postfix rebooted, let's go ahead and try to send that email and see what happens. This time we got no error messages, but we also have not received that email yet. And here is a view of the Gmail account, so you can see that we still haven't receive that email. So our configuration might not be totally correct. In order to examine to see if we can figure out what we need to do to adjust our configuration, we're going to use tail-f and we're going to look at the mail log of our Proxmox server. Here is the command that we'll be using and let's press enter. And it looks like we have no such files. Hmm, what's going on? Okay. So it looks like Postfix isn't staying running on our Proxmox server. Now, this may easily be fixed. So let's see what we can do to fix this. Let's go ahead and first press Control C, which is going to return us back to the command line from our command where we were viewing this log. And just to catch you up, this is the command, the journal ctl u postfix e command that we used to view the log. And now we're going to use apt to install a utility called mail utilities. And let's see what happens. Issuing this command, saying why, we're going to install the utility. Now that it's installed, let's go ahead and press our up arrow a few times until we get our test command with echo. Let's press enter and see if we get the email. Once again, we got no email, so let's return to our logs and see what happened. Okay, so after some further troubleshooting for this video, we found that we're not authenticating correctly. And what this means is that Proxmox doesn't have some more prerequisite software installed that we're going to need to authenticate with our Gmail server. So let's go ahead and add this at this point by going to the bottom of these logs and using apt to install this software module here. Pressing enter should install the software. Then we're going to go ahead and restart Postfix with a systemctl restart command. And then we're going to use postquery f to force a retry of our mail query. Now let's head to our Proxmox server or our email address rather and see if we got anything. And it looks like we have, and it looks like we have. We've gotten all of our test emails that we've sent here trying to make things work. Now this is great news but it doesn't instill a lot of confidence inside of our setup. 
So let's go ahead, create a container, and try backing up the container, which should generate an email response to ourselves after we configure the user interface to use our email address. To do this, we're going to head back to our Proxmox web interface. We're going to close the chef, then we're going to go to local. We're going to select CT templates, select templates, pick a random template, 22.04 should be good. Download it so we can create a container. You don't have to re-download a template if you already have one on your system, but this being a fresh install for us, I'm going to need something to work with. So now let's go to data center, go to users, select our user account. In our case, it's going to be root. Hit edit, come over here where it has email address, press OK. So now Proxmox knows what our email address is. Then we're going to go to create template. We'll just fill in some information like text, quickly move through the steps of creating this container because its configuration is really of no importance to us. It's just going to serve as an object to back up. Now that we've created this container or in the process of right now, we can go ahead and close the container creation utility, select the container, go to backups, press backup now, allow it to back up to wherever it's going, and run the job. If everything goes successfully, when this container is finished backing up, we should get an email. Let's head back to our Gmail account, and we do see that we got a successful email that this container was backed up. We now know we have successfully configured our Proxmox server to send us emails when tasks are complete, or we need notification about steps being taken on our Proxmox server. I hope you enjoyed this video about getting emails successfully working on your Proxmox server, and you consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to get more virtualization and Proxmox content from Virtualize Everything. As always, have a good night.